Hydraulic torque wrenches are designed to tighten or loosen fasteners which require large amounts of force to achieve proper preload. Hydraulic torque wrenches come in various styles and sizes. Typically, there are low clearance styles for applications that may have overhead clearance issues or tight space restrictions. These tools have an interchangeable link that fits directly over the nut to provide a lighter weight tool solution. There are also square drive style torque wrenches that can range from 3 quarter inch square drive up to 2 and a half inch square drive. These wrenches can be used with an impact socket suited for the application. The wrenches are typically powered by hydraulic pump units. These pumps can be either air, electric, or gasoline powered and have a host of features to suit many applications. It is important to always refer to the specific operating instructions to the wrench and pump you are using to ensure safe operations of the tooling. Proper PPE should be worn at all times, which include gloves, safety glasses, steel-toed shoes, and any other site-specific requirements. Preparation. The first step is ensuring you have the right tool for the application. Verify the stud size and nut size, and then verify your tool size. Visually, inspect the tool to ensure there is no damage that may affect the safe operation of the tool, and make sure the tool has a valid calibration sticker. Inspect your pump unit and hoses to ensure there are no nicks or cuts in the hose. If there are melted areas on the hose, or if you can see metal braided wires exposed, you should immediately dispose of the hose. The fittings should all be wiped clean from any debris on both the pump, hose, and the tool. Check that the oil level is full and is clean. The gauge on the pump should read zero, and you should have a valid calibration certificate attached to the pump that shows calibration within one year. When connecting the wrench to the pump, the fitting should be wiped clean of any dirt and debris, as this could cause damage to the internal parts. The fittings should be connected hand tight in order to completely depress the ball check. If the fitting isn't tight, it will shut off flow of oil to the wrench and it will not operate properly. Pump Unit Setup When utilizing an air pump unit, you will have a pendant hose that consists of three separate hoses with male fittings that are numbered 1, 2, and 3. Connect hose stamped number 1 to the number 1 female fitting on the pump, number 2 to number 2, and so on. When connecting the plant air hose, ensure any dirt or water have been removed from the line before it is connected to the pump unit. You should always connect utilizing pins, whip checks, etc. to ensure safety. When utilizing an electric powered pump, there are several different models available depending on your preference or site requirements. Some of the options are single tool or multi-tool operation, a cooling fan to keep the pump motor cool, auto cycle, 120 volt or 220 volt, flow rate, and etc. In the same way you inspected the air pump, visually inspect all of the electrical cords, including the pendant, power cord, and any extension cords. If using an extension cord up to 25 feet, make sure it is at least 12 gauge to ensure it will operate at full amperage. Check for a valid calibration certificate, check the gauge read zero and the sight glass for the oil level. Make sure it is full and the oil is clean. Proceed to check the twin line hose and fittings as we did on the air pump. The electric pump also has a torque control valve to set the proper PSI. To operate the pump, first turn the on off switch to on. Then you will notice the pendant has two buttons. One is set and the other is run. You must first press the set button then the run button to start the pump. When ready to stop torquing, push the stop button. Note, the pumps will not start without pushing the set button first. Always treat the pendant carefully. Do not drop on the ground as it could damage internal parts causing the pump not to operate correctly. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will be using an air operated pump unit. After you have completed all the checks and the hoses are properly connected, Stand back and turn on the plant air. You should check the small air gauge and it should read between 80 and 100 PSI. 
The pump requires between 80 and 100 CFM to run properly. Turn on the pump by pressing and releasing the advance button on the pendant once. Letting the pump idle, check the lubricator on the back of the pump to ensure it drips once every 10 to 20 seconds. If it does not, you can increase or decrease the drip speed by adjusting the screw on top of the lubricator sight glass. Clockwise is a slower drip and counterclockwise is a faster drip. Once the lubricator drip is set, stand back and hold down the advance button to build pressure to 10,000 PSI. If the pump does not build pressure to 10,000 PSI, release the advance button and push the off button once to turn the pump off. With the pump off, turn the torque control valve clockwise to build more pressure. Repeat the pump operation. Torque wrench setup. With the tool on the floor, stand back and operate the wrench to 10,000 PSI. You will want to cycle the wrench five times. Turn on the pump by pressing and releasing the advance button once. Hold the advance button down and the tool will advance. It will stroke out and the pump will build pressure. Inspect the entire system for leaks. If a leak is discovered, never touch it with your hands. This could cause serious injury by hydraulic injection. Shut down the entire system and retighten fittings if necessary or refer to the troubleshooting guide to resolve the leak. Remember to look for leaks with your eyes, not your hands. Proper bolting sequence pattern and foot pound requirements are also essential to ensure proper load is applied so it is important to check with your customer or company on any specific procedures relating to bolting the joint, including the type of lubricant that may be required when installing the studs and the nuts. Once you have been given load requirements, you can check the tool torque conversion chart for the proper PSI and foot-pound requirements based on the tool you are using. The pump gauge reads in PSI, Therefore, you must convert foot-pounds to PSI. To set the pump to the correct PSI, hold down the advance button, turn down the torque control valve to the proper PSI, then release the advance button. Push the advance button once again to check the repeatability of the pressure setting. When using a square drive style tool, inspect it just as you did the low clearance tool to ensure its safety. Confirm the nut size to make sure you have the correct socket and attach the socket using a pin or o-ring to secure it so the socket will stay properly attached to the tool. Adjust the reaction arm so it is at a 90 degree angle to the tool and has a full reaction against the flange or the flat of an adjacent nut. Make sure it is fully engaged onto the wrench and locked in place. Never put your hands between the reaction arm and the flange. This could cause major injury. Keep hands away from all possible pinch point areas during pressurization. The hoses should be positioned so that they are not in a position to get damaged during the operation. Bolting the flange. You are now ready to bolt your flange. Install the safety handle if applicable. Put the wrench on the first nut to be torqued. When using a low clearance tool, make sure it is positioned correctly on the flange and reacting against the flat of the adjacent nut if possible. Be aware of pinch points that can cause injury. If using a backup wrench, make sure your fingers are clear and you are standing to the side as this wrench will swing and move when pressure is applied. High pressure hydraulics can be dangerous if you are not taking all safety precautions and paying 100% attention to your job. Advance the wrench by using the pendant remote and releasing the advance button when the wrench has reached the end of its stroke. By releasing the advance button, the wrench piston will retract and ratchet the internal gears back so that it can be operated again. Continue advancing and retracting the wrench the same way until it stalls at the preset pressure. Stalling is what happens when you press the advance button and the nut will not advance any further. At this point, you know you have reached the proper torque on this nut. Turn the pump off at the pendant and move the tool to the next nut. Remember to keep your fingers away from pinch points in case the pump is accidentally turned on at this time. Continue with the same steps, 
following your customer or company bolting procedure until all bolts are tightened. To loosen a bolt, adjust the torque control valve on the pump so the pump gauge reads 10,000 PSI. Simply turn the wrench over and place on the first nut to be loosened. It is always good, safe practice to begin breakout with the nut furthest away from you as there may be stored pressure or product in the line. Again, make sure you have a good reaction point and your hands are clear from any pinch point. Advance the wrench until the nut starts to move. Never strike the wrench or impact socket while under pressure. This can cause injury. Continue to advance and retract until the nut can be moved freely by hand. If the nut does not move at 10,000 PSI, you can change tools to one with higher foot-pound capacity and repeat. Loosen the nut by hand a few times to eliminate the possibility of it becoming tight again as the flange relaxes or opens. Turn off the pump and move the tool to the next nut to be loosened. When using a square drive wrench to loosen the bolts, reverse the square drive by removing and reinstalling it on the opposite side. If using a safety handle, you will need to move this to the other side of the wrench as well. Once the square drive has been reversed, position on flange ensuring the reaction arm is safely in place and positioned correctly. Again, begin with the nut furthest away from you as a precaution if there is any pressure in the line. Hands should be clear from pinch points and begin advancing the wrench until the nut starts to move. In review, Always refer to the manufacturing operating instructions before using any hydraulic equipment. Always use proper PPE and pay close attention to hand placement to ensure you stay safe.